So I see a lot of people make like vacation life hack videos or top 10 must see, must do things at Disney World. And I feel like my favorite things usually get left off of these lists. And I think that that's because when I go to Disney World, I like to do lame things. I thought I would make you guys a top 10 travel guide that caters to my tastes. Just in case any of you guys also like to go to expensive vacation destinations to do lame things. Number 10, the Carousel of Progress. Okay, it's worth it. Carousel of Progress is a 20-minute animatronic stage show about the way technology has changed since the 1900s. The set rotates to different households as the same ageless animatronic family takes you through the different inventions of that era. Yes, sir. Buildings are towering now as high as 20 stories. Moving pictures flipper up on a big screen. To be honest, the show is kind of boring, but it's one of the attractions that Walt originally took to the 1964 New York World's Fair. And aside from like some cosmetic changes and updating the tech in the final scene, it is pretty much the same show that it was then. It also um, broke yeah, down while we were writing it's it. It's just playing it again. And sing. Boy, I've got to see that. <laughs> Oh my god, we're trapped. <laughs> we can travel from New York to Los well? Angeles by train. See, there will be rotating in 30 seconds. So when you're watching the show, it's kind of like you're a time traveler that's gone to the World's Fair. And like, you're probably asking yourself, why you didn't just go to like the dinosaur era or something? You're like a bored time traveler. Like, like you're like checking your watch. And not in like an exciting time traveler way, like, great Scott, but like, like in a hmm. But that's better than not being a time traveler. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow And tomorrow's just a dream away Man has a dream and that's the star Number nine, the People Mover. The People Mover is a 16 minute long ride that moves seven miles an hour and it's these little cars and they take you on an elevated path around Tomorrowland and they like go through and around the other attractions. And when you go past an attraction, it tells you what that attraction is like and how it's exciting and you could be on that attraction, but instead you're on the People Mover. Ooh, Space Mountain. Space Mountain. Look, when I'm on Buzz Lightyear, I don't really feel like I'm fighting aliens. When I'm on the People Mover, I feel like I am riding public transit in a utopian future city. And yeah, again, maybe there are more exciting things to be doing in a utopian future city, but it's better than not being there. The People Mover is my favorite ride in the Magic Kingdom. I once rode it five times in a row by myself because no one else wanted to ride it with me. It also broke down while we were riding it. We're trapped and, and we have to listen to Shake It Off now as punishment until they come and get us. Okay, this is how you get a copyright strike is by playing this clip. Oh. Okay. Number eight, the goats. I feel like Disney World doesn't want you to see the goats. The goats are at Animal Kingdom, so they're already working at a steep disadvantage because like this park is a real zoo and it has gorillas and stuff, but then they're like, hey, we also have goats. To get to these goats, you have to board a train and ride to the opposite end of the theme park. The goats are only accessible by train and if you get on this train, the only things it takes you to are the goats and the building that has spiders. It should be called the Goats and Spiders Railway, but it's not. What's this go? Oh, yes, yes. Willis. Disneyland used to have goats too, but they closed it because it was unpopular and they're putting Star Wars Land there now. Basically, I really like goats, so I like to go pet the goats. I could be on Expedition Everest, the Yeti-themed roller coaster, but I like to go pet the goats. Bah, bah. <laughs> 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 
Number seven, walking through the line on Space Mountain. Space Mountain is a wonderful ride, but my favorite part about Disney World Space Mountain is walking through the line to go inside. They have like whimsical alien baggage claim terminals and like signage and low lighting and optical illusion space windows to make you feel like you're really walking into some kind of space port. Then when you're leaving, you walk on a squishy speed ramp past like dioramas of future living. I feel like Space Mountain the ride is on a lot of people's top 10 lists and the experience of walking through the line is totally overlooked and it's not fair. Number six, Spaceship Earth. Spaceship Earth is my favorite ride at Disney World, but I do feel like it's kind of a bait and switch. When you first walk inside Epcot, you see the big Epcot orb and that orb is Spaceship Earth. The ride is inside of that orb. Also, the ride is called Spaceship Earth, which Objectively, that's just a very exciting name. I can't help but imagine pointing to the orb and telling a child that they're about to ride Spaceship Earth and then they get on it and find out that it's a one mile an hour dark ride past scenes from history while Dame Judi Dench tells you what papyrus is. This unknown Egyptian pounding reeds flat is inventing papyrus. This ride is full of animatronics, which I like to look at, and I think that Judy Dench has the voice of an angel, so to me this ride is like a delightful 15 minute long dream. Number five, journey into imagination with Figment. Yeah. ride that before my time used to be this beautiful timeless attraction about a nutty steampunk professor who flies in his whimsical flying machine and harnesses the power of imagination with his lovable pet dragon. And then thanks to budget cuts they carved out like half of the ride and made it a lot shorter and now it's like this embarrassing dated slapstick thing where Eric Idle takes you through a lab. The dragon is still there but now he's like a naughty bad boy and he sprays you with stink bomb smell. <sighs> I still like to ride it and just kind of spend the whole time bitterly ruminating on what used to be and looking at the dragon animatronics. Number four, CB Jams, the Country Bear Jamboree. <laughs> there isn't really a way to sell anybody on this ride attraction show. It's not, it's not a ride. Basically, if you don't think you would enjoy a 15 minute animatronic show about anthropomorphic bears in the American South playing country music, then I don't think there's anything I could say to change your mind. They're so big. Yeah. <laughs> but I pity you. This show is boring, but it's great. Yes. <laughs> I love him. There was blood on the sand. Number three, meeting BB-8. There are so many great characters you can meet at Disney World. You can meet the princesses. You can meet a Mickey Mouse whose mouth and eyes move and he talks to you and he'll do like a magic trick. BB-8 is like, like, like he's a statue, basically. Oh, BB-8. I mean, it really is like a close experience to meeting the real BB-8. You know, like the real BB-8 is like a plastic ball that makes sounds. And that's what you get. I don't know why it's exciting to meet BB-8, but it is. Number two, the orange swirl. So Disneyland has this pineapple soft serve that everybody raves about. It's called Dole Whip, but only in Florida you can get orange swirl soft serve. The orange half is just straight up frozen orange concentrate. So it's super tart. It's almost bitter and like vanilla soft serve is usually kind of mediocre but the contrast between the two makes it so refreshing and perfect it's just like the best combination you can get and its mascot is orange bird and i love orange bird i put this one pretty high on the list because i think it's pretty lame to be excited about a food snack on vacation it's just a soft serve and I always eat like several, like I keep getting them, even if I'm not like feeling it, if I'm full, if I'm cold, I will get them anyway because I know I can't get them at home. Orange swirl, right in front of orange bird. Mm. 
Number one is Sunny Eclipse. Oh my god, let me tell you about Sunny Eclipse. So there's this one restaurant in Tomorrowland, it's called Cosmic Rays Starlight Cafe, and you can get burgers and other fast food options. They actually don't even have a lot I can even eat. But here's the thing, you get your food, you proceed to the seating area, and there on the stage is just this animatronic lounge singer alien constantly serenading you as you eat. Sunny Eclipse has a 24 minute performance loop and when it ends, he just goes right back into it. He is never not performing. And when he's not singing the praises of the various food offerings, he is singing about his own backstory because God forbid you eat your burger and leave without learning the entire Sunny Eclipse canon. Hello all you earthlings, my name is Sunny Eclipse. It's sunny, yes, it's so listen to me people, I got music at my fingertips. I really wish real artists saw were uncomfortably autobiographical to this degree. There's even an entire song dedicated to explaining why he has backup singers, even though you can't see any other animatronics. And the explanation is that they're called the Space Angels, and they're invisible. They didn't just not want to build more animatronics. They are invisible space angels. They came from space, they're invisible, and now they sing backup, okay? <laughs> so relieved when he got to that song because I would not have tolerated that kind of plot hole in my fast food animatronic entertainment. So that's my list. Please leave in the comments your favorite lame things. If you put like a roller coaster, I will straight up block you. With your kind permission, I'd like to sing it for you now. Go something like this. Oh bright little star, though I'm light years away from you now, I can't help but to feel that somehow we're both wishing on you I imagine your light in her eyes As she gazes up into the skies At this moment does she realize You are in my eyes too Tune in next week for my top three rides at Universal Studios that are actual rides and not just 3D movies with moving seats. It's top three because that's all they have.